Hello and welcome to uh, the uh, second part of Unit 3 where we're going to cover chapters 20 and 21. Chapter 20 will be about the lymphatic system and chapter 21 will be about the immune system and I'm just going to warn you up front, your textbook will have um, a lot more information on both of these body systems than we're actually going to cover. That's especially true for the immune system uh, because you will have more depth on the immune system when you take your microbiology class and um, that's appropriate since you uh, it's better to have studied the microorganisms that your immune system is really um, geared to protect against <clears throat> before you have a lot of detailed information on that body system. And the lymphatic system and the immune system work together, but we're going to cover the lymphatic system first. The lymphatic system also uh, plays a very important role in controlling your interstitial fluid levels, as we will see. So here's kind of a general overview of the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic system, it consists of three major parts. There's a network of lymphatic vessels, or sometimes those are just called lymphatics. And those are illustrated for you, highlighted for you over here on this diagram. So um, now they're not showing the ones down in the legs. Obviously, the legs have been chopped off. But uh, uh, the green lines you see there, those are lymphatic vessels, and the little rounded areas that you see scattered around there on the diagrams are the lymph nodes, and um, we have about five to six hundred lymph nodes in total in the, uh, in the human body. The lymph nodes really function like filters for this lymphatic fluid. The fluid that is passing through the lymphatic vessels and the lymph nodes is called lymph, and this is really interstitial fluid that has drained out of your tissues and where is it going? It's going back to the blood. Okay, It's actually going to re-enter the blood in the subclavian vein. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that as well. If you didn't have your lymphatic system, your interstitial fluids would uh, increase in volume, increase in volume, increase in volume, and you'd have tissue swelling all throughout the body. So those are your three main parts. And again, the major functions include returning interstitial fluid and leaked plasma proteins back to the blood. And if you guys remember when we were talking about blood vessels and especially capillaries and how on the arteriolar end of a capillary, more fluid gets pushed into your tissues, then returns to the capillaries on the venule end. Um, so because of that, you have to have a way to get rid of that excess fluid. And that's where your lymphatics come in. I kind of think of them as drainage ditches for your tissues. If you didn't have them there, your uh, fluid levels would build up too much and your tissues would continue to swell. Also, if any plasma proteins, you know, most of the proteins, these larger organic protein molecules stay in the blood. They don't move out of the blood into the tissues, but some of them do. Some of them do leak out and those have to be returned back to the blood. One key thing about the lymphatic system, this is a one-way flow. It's not a circulation. There are no circuits with the lymphatic system like we've seen with blood vessels. It's strictly a flow of tissue fluids back to the blood. Okay, and on their way they're going to get filtered in the lymph nodes. There also are some other organs and tissues that are considered secondary lymphatic organs that we'll talk about as well. And, um, a, an additional major role of the lymphatic system is your uh, some of the cells that we've learned about that play important roles with your immune system are stationed in these lymphatic type tissues because those are good locations to intercept microorganisms that may be trying to invade the body. Okay, so here's how this uh, these lymphatic vessels work. Okay, so up here on this diagram on the right, you see a capillary bed like we were just studying when we went over blood vessels and you can see that capillary bed is located in some sort of generic tissue in the body and you're going to have your interstitial tissue fluids surrounding the cells that are located in this tissue. Now what we haven't really looked at before are uh, 
microscopic lymphatic capillaries that are also present there. Okay, and those are separated. Those are separate from the um, the capillaries of the cardiovascular system. And one key thing that's different about your uh, lymphatic capillaries is they have a closed end. And on those closed ends, they have a flap-like structure. They have a flap-like mini-valve. And so what happens as interstitial fluid volumes build up, you know, in tissues throughout your body, that's going to create hydrostatic pressure. Or it's probably better to say hydrostatic pressures in your tissues gradually increase. And again, that's going to be due because more... Uh, due to the fact that more fluid is being pushed out on the arteriolar end of a capillary bed than over here on the venular end where you're taking fluids back in. So more is being pushed out than is being taken back in. That's going to create increasing hydrostatic pressure inside your tissues. As that pressure builds, it pushes open these little mini valves that you have on the closed ends of lymphatic capillaries. And so that uh, interstitial fluid enters these lymphatic capillaries. Okay, and then lymphatic capillaries, like you're seeing over here on the diagram, those are gradually going to lead to larger lymphatic vessels. And uh, along the way, the fluid that is passing through those vessels will encounter lymph nodes. And lymph nodes, we're going to talk more about those. Those are basically filters for the lymphatic fluids that are draining off of your tissues and you have um, leukocyte warriors of your immune system stationed in those lymph nodes to try to intercept any microorganisms or other foreign substances that might have been present in your tissues. That's a great place to intercept them because if you think about it, you've got this excess fluid that's draining out of your tissues and into these lymphatic capillaries. So if you have some bacteria in this tissue, those bacteria, some of them anyway, are going to drain into those lymphatic capillaries. And so if you have white blood cells stationed in your lymph nodes, uh, that's a great place for them to actually intercept and capture some of these microorganisms and then it sets off the alarm bells that there's an infection going on and your white blood cell army can swarm into that tissue where you have other bacteria or viruses located and go ahead and try to wipe them out. So your lymphatic and immune systems cooperate with each other. The filtered lymph, if you look carefully at this diagram here, um, eventually makes its way back to the blood. So this extra fluid gets filtered, gets dumped back into the blood, and uh, that occurs in the subclavian veins on the left and the right side. Okay, so most of your tissues contain lymphatic capillaries, these little microscopic lymphatic vessels that surround capillary beds. However, you don't have them in your bones, you don't have them in your teeth. Um, the bone marrow actually doesn't have them. You've already got those sinusoid type capillaries there that pick up the red blood cells and white blood cells and platelets that are, that are being manufactured in your red bone marrow. And actually your central nervous system does not have these uh, lymphatic capillaries either. The cent central nervous system is set up, it's more guarded. Uh, you don't have as many access points, even from capillaries. You have tighter junctions between the, the cells and the walls of the, the blood capillaries to prevent um, things that are foreign to the body, like bacteria and viruses, from getting into the central nervous system as easily as they can in other parts of the body. Uh, there are some special lymphatic capillaries that are present within your, uh, along the internal lining of your intestines, and they're called lacteals. And these are, they're lymphatic capillaries, but they're specialized in function. They actually absorb your digested fats and um, deliver that to the blood. That's called chyle, and you will... Uh, Learn more about that when we cover the digestive system.
Okay, so lymph is draining off of tissues all across your body. And, um, you know, it's a one-way flow, so it's not a circulation. That lymph is eventually going to be dumped back into the bloodstream. And um, eventually your lymph, you know, no matter where it is drained off of, no matter what tissues it has come from, will make its way into two large ducts. You know, so you've got that same concept where, where you're... Um, teeny tiny streets uh, merge in with secondary type streets and then those merge into expressways. Well, you have a couple of big expressways that are going to take lymph back to the uh, subclavian veins. One of those is called the right lymphatic duct and we'll take a look at that on the diagram. And that collects lymph that has drained off of the right upper arm and also the right side of the head and the thorax. And then your thoracic duct, which passes through the, the center part of the chest, um, it actually arises from, it starts at a, uh, a swollen feature called the cisterna chili, which is located around your first and second lumbar vertebrae. And this feature, the cisterna chili, is squeezed between your first and second lumbar vertebrae. Uh, vertebrae and the descending aorta and then above that you have this thoracic duct so you have lymph coming in from the abdominopelvic organs the legs and so forth eventually it makes its way into this cisterna chili and then it flows from there into the thoracic duct the thoracic duct and your right lymphatic duct empty this filtered lymph uh, into your subclavian veins right where they're on the right and the left side right where they form their junction with the internal jugular veins so you can see that here um, right in there there's that cisterna chili oops flipped off of the slide there for a second there's the cisterna chili and so here are your, you know, these are larger lymphatic vessels. These are not the microscopic ones. The microscopic ones are going to lead to those. And you got lymph nodes scattered around in various locations. But um, <clears throat> all, everything from the abdominal pelvic cavity and lower, all that lymph enters the cisterna chili. And then it heads into this thoracic duct, which is passing this way behind the esophagus behind the lungs and then empties into the left subclavian vein right around where it meets up with the left internal jugular vein and then over on the right side the right lymphatic duct is pretty short it's not like the thoracic duct it's a little short one but it's right in there a little short stump right where the uh, right subclavian vein and the right internal jugular vein are coming together so all of the fluid that's coming from the area shaded in green is dumping into that little short piece, the right lymphatic duct. Everything that you see over here in red, all the lymph coming off of tissues in those locations, eventually makes its way into the thoracic duct. And then it's going to re-enter the blood over on the left-hand side into the left subclavian bank. And I just realized over here, on this PowerPoint, I shouldn't say the right lymphatic duct, duct drains the right upper arm. It should just be the right arm. I just realized that it said that. So scratch out upper there, and I'll try to remember to correct that on the PowerPoint. That should be right arm, not right upper arm. All right, so how does this lymph move? So uh, unlike in your cardiovascular system, the pressures are not going to be very high in your lymphatic vessels. And if you look at the diagrams, a lot of that lymph is fighting gravity to make its way back to the subclavian veins. So you have some weak forces that kind of propel it along. Uh, those lymphatic vessels are generally running alongside or parallel to arteries. So as those arteries pulse, with changes in the uh, blood volume passing through them, that's going to help propel lymph back towards those 
subclavian veins. And then you do have smooth muscles inside the walls of your larger lymphatic vessels. You do have smooth muscle tissue that's capable of contracting and generating some pressure and forcing that fluid along the way. All right, so that's kind of an introduction to the lymphatic system. In the uh, next lecture, we'll talk more about what these lymph nodes are and the cells that we expect to find inside the lymph nodes and what some of their jobs are.